Here are some additional valid argument forms of valid argument patterns. Let's we're going to start in the upper left corner. If p then q, not q, therefore not p. Valid. It's something called modus tollens, or remember, p is the antecedent, q is the consequent. Not q is denying the consequent of the if-then, sometimes known as denying the consequent. Valid form of argument. By the way, I'm not going to give examples for these right now, but what I'm going to do is leave it as an exercise for you. Once you've finished with this particular uh, slide, why don't you not go on to the next one, but first sit down and try to come up with an argument of that form that kind of demonstrates to you that it's right, and then think about it for a while. See if you can come up with see if you can come up with the ar an argument where it doesn't work out right. I don't think you're going to be able to do the latter, but if you that is come up with one where the argument, the conclusion doesn't follow from the premises, but I want you to think about it a little bit. I just want to go through a few. The final if then is below modus tollens called hypothetical syllogism. By the way, the word syllogism just refers to certain kind of inferences. That is, there are two premises and a conclusion. Hypothetical being it's an if-then, a sometimes called a hypothetical. We sometimes call them conditionals. But you see, it, the, the inference goes this way. Premise 1, if P, then Q. Premise 2, if Q, then R. Therefore, if P, then R. Now, for the uh, people listening to the video who have um, mathitis, remember the condition that your brain turns off the second you learn anything, you look at anything, it looks like mathematics. Remember, it's not mathematics. These are just placeholders, P being some statement, Q being another statement. Uh, but I think if you take a look at it, try look through a couple examples, we're going to see this is a valid form of inference. A good connection between those premises and uh, the conclusion. Impossible for premises like that to be true, while at the same time the conclusion false. Going to the upper right corner, disjunctive syllogism. We now know what a syllogism is, right? Argument with two premises and a conclusion. And disjunction, either ors are disjunction, meaning they're disjoined one or the other. Either P is true or Q is true. Not P is correct. In other words, P is false. Therefore, it's got to be Q. Next, we move on to something called contraposition. And this is an if-then kind of inference, supplementary one, and it just tells us how negation works. And if anything, if you look at the one diagonally across modus tollens, uh, it almost uses the same kind of inference, but it says, if P, then Q, you can conclude, if not P, then not, sorry, if P, then Q, you can conclude that from that, if not P, then not Q following modus tollens. What I'd like you to do is take a couple of minutes and come up with some good examples, what I call paradigms, you know, perfect models, uh, examples of these inferences to convince yourself that premises like this lead without failure to a conclusion like the one of the pattern or the form that we're talking about here.